Imagine standing on the vast plains of East Africa about 1.8 million years ago. The sun is scorching, the land is shifting, and life is a constant battle for survival. This is where our story begins, in the birthplace of humanity. The early humans, Homo erectus, the true pioneers, were driven by something deep within them, an urge stronger than fear. Some call it survival, others curiosity. Whatever it was, it led them on a journey that would shape the world as we know it. But why leave Africa, the cradle of life? The answer lies in the environment. The shifting climate played a massive role, with periods of drought making food and water sources unreliable. Large herds of animals, the primary food source, were also moving, and where they went, humans followed. With their growing intelligence and adaptability, these early humans didn't just survive, they thrived. And soon, their footprints would stretch far beyond the lands they knew. Earth wasn't always a hospitable place, especially not during the Pleistocene epoch, the era that saw our ancestors venture beyond Africa. The world was cycling through ice ages, with glaciers advancing and retreating like the tide. This fluctuation created a patchwork of landscapes, lush grasslands, dense forests, and arid deserts. But it was the corridor of the Levant, a bridge between Africa and Eurasia, that would serve as the first stepping stone into a new world. Now, picture a small group of early humans. Let's call them the Kintu tribe. Led by an experienced elder named Raku, they are a mix of young and old, warriors and gatherers, each carrying the knowledge of their ancestors. Their journey isn't just about survival. It's about finding a better future for their children. And so, with the rising sun at their backs, they take the first steps into the unknown. Migration wasn't an easy feat the Kintu tribe had to rely on their wits and instincts. The Great Rift Valley, where they began, was already changing. Lakes were drying up, forcing them to move north in search of food and water. They weren't alone. Other groups of Homo erectus were making similar decisions creating a slow but steady stream of migration. As they moved toward the Levant, the challenges grew. New predators lurked in the shadows, giant hyenas, saber-toothed cats, and even early lions. One fateful night, the tribe faced a terrifying encounter when a pack of saber-toothed cats cornered them near a dried-up riverbed. With only fire and sharpened sticks, they fended off the ambush, suffering injuries but surviving to push forward. Fire. One of humanity's greatest tools proved essential, allowing them to ward off threats and maintain control over the night. Water crossings presented another deadly hazard. As they approached a swollen river during the rainy season, one of their younger members, eager to cross, slipped into the raging current. The tribe scrambled to pull him back, using a fallen tree as an impromptu bridge. Such dangers taught them invaluable lessons about patience and caution in unfamiliar terrain. Food shortages also plagued their journey. When hunting became scarce, they scavenged the remains of kills left behind by other predators, an act filled with risk. On one occasion, they stumbled upon a half-eaten carcass of an antelope, only to realize too late that a massive, territorial giant hyena had claimed it. Forced to retreat, they learned to be more strategic in scavenging, always on the lookout for lurking dangers. The Levant region, modern-day Israel, Palestine, and Syria was a gateway into Europe. Fossil evidence from sites like Dmanisai in Georgia suggests that some of the earliest human travelers made it here nearly 1.8 million years ago. The Kintu followed suit, navigating river valleys and open savannas until they reached the foot of the Caucasus Mountains, where colder climates and new challenges awaited them. Stepping into Europe was like stepping onto another planet. Unlike the warm savannas of Africa, Europe's environment was harsher, colder, and less forgiving. But the Kintu were adaptable. They learned to hunt new animals, woolly rhinoceroses, massive deer, and even early mammoths. Archaeological finds from sites like Ataperca, Spain, show that early humans developed new tools, using flint to craft sharper, more efficient weapons. With these, the Kintu tribe's hunters became more effective, learning to take down larger prey as a group. Cooperation became their secret weapon. However, the journey into Europe was not just a test of adaptation, but one of survival against the unknown. The deeper the Kintu traveled, the more they faced terrifying perils. One fateful night, 
As the tribe rested in a rocky overhang, a pack of cave lions emerged from the shadows, their golden eyes gleaming in the dim firelight. The Kintu scrambled, grabbing weapons and shielding their young. A tense standoff ensued until the lions, unwilling to risk injury, slinked back into the darkness. It was a chilling reminder that they were intruders in a land of formidable predators. The cold was another unrelenting adversary. Unlike Africa, where shelter was abundant, the frigid European winters forced the Kintu to find new ways to stay warm. They huddled in caves, reinforcing their shelters with animal hides and branches. One particularly brutal winter saw a sudden blizzard trap them in a ravine, forcing them to burn all their stored wood in a desperate bid to survive the freezing night. This harsh lesson reinforced the necessity of preparation, and from then on, they stockpiled firewood and dried meat for the winters to come. Hunger was an ever-present specter. The vast herds that had guided them north were now harder to track. In one desperate moment, the Kintu attempted to bring down a wounded mammoth unaware that an approaching Neanderthal hunting party had the same goal. The confrontation was brief but intense, with both groups shouting and brandishing weapons before ultimately backing down. Such encounters were becoming more frequent, proof that the Kintu were no longer alone in this new world. The colder climate also demanded another crucial innovation, clothing. While earlier generations might have relied on natural shelters, the Kintu began using animal hides to keep warm, possibly even inventing primitive sewing techniques by using bone needles, a fascinating possibility suggested by ancient bone tools found across Europe. One of the biggest game-changers for the Kintu tribe and for all early humans in Europe was mastering fire. Fire wasn't just for warmth. It allowed them to cook food, making it easier to digest and killing harmful bacteria. This meant they could eat a wider range of foods, including tough plant roots and raw meat that would have been otherwise indigestible. Caves became their refuge, places where they could control the elements. Sites like Zakudian in China, where evidence of controlled fire dates back nearly 700,000 years, show that early humans were already taming flames to their advantage. The Kintu, too, carried embers from old fires, ensuring they never lost their most precious resource. As they moved deeper into Europe, the Kintu tribe encountered something unexpected, another type of human. These were the Neanderthals, stockier, stronger, and more adapted to the cold. At first, there was likely tension, as different human species weren't always friendly. But over time, they began exchanging knowledge, and perhaps even genes. Genetic evidence today shows that most non-African people carry traces of Neanderthal DNA, suggesting that interbreeding occurred. The Kintu's descendants were likely part of these early encounters, blending traits from both Homo erectus and Neanderthals, setting the stage for the emergence of modern Homo sapiens. The Kintu tribe's journey wasn't just about survival, it was about evolution. Over thousands of years, their descendants would spread further, adapt, and eventually give rise to new generations of humans who would continue exploring and conquering new frontiers. The story of early human migration isn't just ancient history. It's written in our DNA, in the fossils beneath our feet, and in the very way we interact with the world. From the dry savannas of Africa to the frozen tundras of Ice Age Europe, our ancestors proved one thing above all. We are a species born to move, to adapt, and to thrive. And it all began with that first step into the unknown.